Hi, John Wells here. Today I'm venturing into the world of green screen for the first time. I have managed to turn my spare room into a mini green screen studio for under 50 euros. Incredibly cheap and I'm going to show you exactly how I've done it and how I managed to achieve it. Hopefully behind me now I've got a rather nice backdrop. Um, I don't know what it's going to be yet. I'm going to put that in during post-production when I find something nice to put in there. Um, and now if I take this backdrop away, behind me you should see some of the pictures on the wall in my spare room. Anyone that's seen any of my previous tutorial videos, you've probably seen some of my backdrops before, and uh, you'll know this is my spare room. And However, I'm going to cheat again because um, what that backdrop is, is a video of my wall so that I can put it onto my green screen. Uh, I can demonstrate that simply by zooming backwards. And that's my green screen behind me. Pretty darn simple. I'm going to show you how I did that. But first of all, don't forget, if there's anything you enjoy about this video at all, you can give me a thumbs up, please, if you would. Or better still, you can subscribe and click the notification bell. It's going to come up here somewhere. And you'll get all of my upcoming videos. I'm going to go off now and get myself a lovely cup of coffee and uh, maybe a piece of cake. And I'm going to let this um, carry on with a bit of pre-recorded film that I've done showing you how I put my green screen together. Okay, first thing is I'm lucky enough to have a wife who thought for Christmas it would be very nice to buy me a green screen curtain. Green screen curtain from Amazon, green one side, blue the other. And I could have shown you the unboxing when it arrived, but it doesn't come in a box. It comes in a little parcel. You open up the parcel, it comes in a, a bag folded up. When you take it out of the bag, it's a bit creased, so um, if you're any good with an iron, it's worth ironing it out the creases. The other thing it comes with when you get it direct is there's a little box, and in the box you get four of these little hook things which are pretty handy, they're on the wall, and then you get four of these little other hook things. <laughs> what I did was I bought three similar hooks to these, and they're the type that you put on the wall, you can take it off and you can peel off the sort of sticky stuff, it doesn't leave any residue. So I put three of those up on the wall behind me, and I also put two up like that, that you have to nail in the wall, just to give it a little bit of extra support. I'm fortunate enough here to have a reasonably good sized wall. So I'll show some pictures of where I put the hooks. Next thing I did, I went to our local fretteria and two things I bought. A very long piece of uh, round metal. It's just a, basically it's a big long spindle. And the other thing, was, uh, look at this, I think a two and a half meter piece of um, wood, just a little piece of batten. Now let's show you how I attached it all up. I worked out where I wanted to put the hooks on the wall, depending on what you're using, you put them up whatever height you want to put them on. The spindle, I can rest that across the top. Next thing I'm going to use are the four round sort of earring hook type things. These are just the little clips for holding the curtain up. Let us simply go up here. I've tried to arrange this in such a way that it can be put up pretty quick and taken down pretty quick because speed is everything. Next thing I did was, when I put the hooks up, I made sure I knew the sort of length of this curtain to start with. So let's hook these up. We can get to them, there's the one. You all should have it to fall down because I'm trying to do this in real time. Then we'll put the second one up. 
getting the picture of how I'm doing this. Something else I forgot to mention as well as buying the piece of batten and the pole that's going across the top. I also picked up two of these things. You see these clamps everywhere all over the place. They're little sort of uh, snippy snappy clamp things and you'll see what they are for in a minute. I'm simply going to use them to try and keep the curtain as taut as possible. So, all I did was I kind of put this up around about, I don't know, around about halfway up the curtain. And I'm just going to reattach this top clamp a second because I didn't do very well. There we go. And I'll try and put a close up of this in a second so you can see exactly what I've done here. Does actually help if I bring the clamp with me. Let's have this one up here. And I kind of level that up, stretch it a little bit. You can just see the button behind it. And there's my green screen. And there's my green screen up as simple as that. Now the other thing that I've done, let me get back into focus here a bit. Now I'm going to move the camera and show you the rest of it. Down here I've got two storage boxes. We've got one there. And I've got one here. And on top of those I've got two sort of uh, bedside lamps. And that's the type with these sort of, I don't know what they're called. You can sort of, they've got little knuckle joints so you can bend them. But pretty much you can see what I've put in there are two LEDs with um, daylight type bulbs, I think they're called. And what that does then is give me a reasonably good coverage on my green screen of light. And that's pretty much as easy as that. I'll also try and show some uh, footage over the top of that. So what happens now, I'm sitting in front of the... Um, green screen at the beginning of this video these these two lamps this one and the other lamp are doing the backlight and then I've also got if I turn this around a floor standing standard lamp and that's an LED one and I set that one up pretty much above my head and to give me some light there and the other thing because I've got white walls it's very handy because you can get a lot of light bouncing off these white walls. If I just turn the light round a bit, you can see the, the difference it makes. Uh, in the ceiling, I'm not going to show it directly at the ceiling. But I've got a ceiling lamp up here. And I'm lucky enough that this is one of those ones with three different lights. It has um, a yellow light in it, a white light in it, and a daylight light in it. And I believe at the moment this is on the daylight light. And it's as simple as that. And that's how I put my little studio together. Oh, sorry, I almost forgot. I forgot to tell you the actual costs of the bits and pieces. The green screen itself was on special from Amazon and it was around about 35 euros. That was excluding uh, postage, whatever the postage was. The wooden baton cost me about 250. The metal rod also cost me something like 250 to 3 euros. So let's call those two 6 euros. Um, the stick on hooks cost me another 3 euros. So what was that? That's six. That's nine euros. And these hook things cost me a couple more. So that's another two. So that's, that's 11 euros. So we got 35 euros, 45 euros, 46 euros. And postage I think was less than four euros. So the whole lot cost me less than 50 euros to get the green screen up and running. Um, obviously um, I've just used a lot of the bits and pieces that I had, i.e. the uh, bedside lamps and I already had um, the standard lamp to give me the overhead light so just goes to show that just using mostly of things that you've got and buying a few bits and pieces 
anybody can set themselves up a little green screen studio. Well, don't forget if there's anything you enjoy about this video at all, you can give me a thumbs up, please, if you would, or better still, you can subscribe and click the notification bell. It's going to come up here somewhere and you'll get all of my up and coming videos.